And really in the last couple of decades, you see these massive platform changes. And when they happen, there are winners and there are losers. So this is charting the lifespan of Fortune 500 companies over the last few decades. S&P 500 companies' lifespan have transitioned from 67 to 15 years. <laughs> Think about how much of an impact that is. In the last 20 years, 50% of Fortune 500 companies do not exist. And this has definitely been accelerated by these massive platform shifts that change the way that we do things every day. And it really tends to follow these four steps in an evolution. You have your initial emergence. So this is limited awareness. You have innovators who are exploring, but we don't really know what the full potential is. Then you shift into this adoption phase. So this is where there's a recognized value. Innovators are taking risks with uh, chat GPT, this is something that happened almost immediately. In the first two days, you had a million users. So that value was recognized almost immediately. Right now, we are sort of in this adoption phase, and we are transitioning over to expansion. That is rapid adoption, industry disruption, industries, businesses, individuals being forced to embrace these technologies just because of the impact uh, that it's known that they can have. And eventually that gives way to ubiquity in terms of something that's widely adopted. It's just the standard and something we integrate into our lives every day. Now, what's interesting with AI is a lot of this functionality and technology has actually existed for some time. So things like natural language processing, machine learning, uh, the technology has been there. What's different is really our ability to speak to a computer and have that computer speak back. And that's opened it up to really the world to be able to leverage this. And how does that impact market research? Some of the trends we've seen, obviously automation and streamlining of research tasks, it's leading to faster turnaround times and reduced costs. The analysis of unstructured data uh, for a large language model, that's obviously something um, that is very good at. Improved predictive modeling for trends and behavior and then increased accuracy of data collection, analysis, and reporting. What do you think about that one, Well, Accuracy is, is gonna be the, the critical component. Like the list that you just showed of all of the manual tasks that market researchers have to do, it's, it's, it's like a miracle to be able to automate all of that. But at the end of the day, if you're not getting accurate outputs, it's, it's, it's not worth anything, right? It's garbage in, garbage out. And one of the things that is critical when you're trying to have a responsible AI is that you make sure that your outputs that you are actually prompting it to give you are tied to some sort of reality. The AI is going to do its best to give you what it thinks you want, but sometimes it's not real. So accuracy and hallucinations is a key challenge that you need to make sure that you are dealing with from the very beginning. The other aspect that we've always had to deal with is bots and biases, right? Fake respondents and biases being put in there. It also creates some other issues as well. Once you start putting data into these large models, questions arise that I'm not qualified to answer. Issues of ownership and confidentiality. How do we make sure that we're maintaining privacy with the data that we have and the security? 